Good afternoon. Welcome to the Basilica of the Sacred Heart. Before Mass begins, please turn off any electronic devices. Hopefully, you all received a copy of the program that was prepared for today's liturgy. Those can be found at the entrances to the Basilica. Our opening hymn is All Creatures of Our God and King. Please join in singing with full heart and voice. Please stand.
My sisters and brothers, may I ask you to turn to face the baptismal font as we begin this great celebration. And we begin our prayers, we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, the consecration and commitment our brothers make this day is rooted in the commitment we all share as Christians through the sacrament of baptism. Let us pray that as this water is blessed, we may have formed in us by God's loving spirit the living likeness of Jesus Christ. Holy and eternal God, we give you thanks for our creation and redemption. We ask you to send your living spirit upon this water and upon all here present who have found rebirth in the font of your love. Renew the living spring of your life in our brothers who this day offer themselves to you with a willing and joyful spirit. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you decreed that the mother of your son should stand by his cross suffering with him. Safeguard in your family the fruits of your great work of redemption and in your goodness make them grow daily more and more. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. 
He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. There he came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. The word of the Lord. Lord, 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when, when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, how blessed are we to be in this basilica at this moment. For today we are witnessing a most important day in the lives of Chris Brennan, Brendan McAleer, and Tim Weed. Today they profess before all of us the vows of poverty, celibacy, and obedience by living as members of the Congregation of Holy Cross for the rest of their lives. Holy Cross is blessed by this commitment of the part of our three young brothers. And all of us in this church are privileged to be here to pray for and with Chris, Brendan, and Tim as they become today finally professed members of the Congregation of Holy Cross. This is a blessed day for us in Holy Cross not only because of the profession of our three brothers, but because today the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows is the patronal feast of the Congregation of Holy Cross. For you see, we believe in Holy Cross, ironically, that when we face the cross in our lives, when we deal with suffering in our lives, it is precisely then that we perceive God's hope in God's saving power, God's love, and God's mercy. And Mary, the mother of sorrows, is our patron because no one held on to this hope more than the mother of our Lord. Mary did not lose hope at the beginning of Jesus' life when Simeon warned her of the pain that she would endure. Nor, as we just heard in the Gospel, did she lose hope at the end of Jesus' life when she stood by his cross when so many abandoned him? Mary, our mother, faced the sorrows of her life with quiet determination and resolute faith in her son. She personified faith and hope in the face of the cross. And we in Holy Cross are privileged to be men who learn from her and unabashedly speak of that hope, bring that hope to whomever and wherever we are called. And perhaps more than ever, we face a world that is desperately in need to receive this message of hope. So Chris, Brendan, Tim, today on our feast day and your final profession day, Mary is with you. In the gospel that was just read, Jesus dying on the cross sees only a few of his followers who had the courage to be there. And he especially notices John, the disciple whom he loved, and Mary, his mother. In telling John that Mary was now John's mother, we are told that from that hour on, this disciple took her into his home. My three brothers, 
Today, as you profess your final vows, as men of hope, know this Blessed Mother stands with you in hope. Take her into your lives today as never before. She will be with you as she was with her son. She will especially be with you in those moments of the cross in your life as she was with her son to the end. For Mary personified and lived the phrase which echoes in the minds of all of us in Holy Cross, Ave Crux, Spes Unica, Hail the Cross, our only hope. As men of hope, we are similarly called to be, as our Holy Father Francis reminds us often, men of joy, privileged to bring the good news of the Lord to God's people. And we, in fact, encounter Christ in our lives when we encounter those to whom we have been called in our ministries. You have already experienced joy in your lives, in your ministries, as you ministered in parishes in Phoenix, in Portland, and Austin, bringing the good news of God to the people in Bangladesh, East Africa, or to the good people of Mizoram in India, and indeed to the homeless at Andre House in Phoenix. Now you have the privilege of being men of hope and joy to the people of God in your present assignments, Holy Redeemer Parish in Portland, King's College, and the University of Portland. And for years to come, you will be blessed by the opportunity to serve the people of God in many places as men of hope, men of joy, men of Holy Cross. My brothers, allow yourselves to continually be taught and formed by these experiences and by the people with whom you will work and live and serve. For Constitution 6 reminds us, quote, we pronounce our vows in a moment, but living them for the sake of the kingdom is the work of a lifetime. The people of God in all of these places will be your teachers. They will bring out the best in you as you minister. But I ask you on this day especially, my three brothers, remember in prayer your first teachers, the ones who first led you to your encounter with Christ, your parents, your families. And know that this basilica is filled with those who helped to bring you to this point in your life, your formators, your professors, your brothers and sisters in Holy Cross, and your friends. They were there to help you hear and discern the word of God and that call of God. They consoled you when you struggled, and they rejoiced with you in great times. Now all of these people, especially your families, surround you in this basilica with their prayer and their love. Finally, my brothers, even with all of that support in this basilica, it was you who personally had to hear the call of the Lord. As our constitutions remind us, the call must rise up within us as from his spirit. Listening to that call was the experience of Elijah in the first reading today. Elijah was tired, losing faith in himself, even asking for death to come. Elijah kept lying down, but the angel kept waking him up so that he may eat and continue his journey. Each time he was awakened, he ate and then he finally reached the mountain where the Lord would pass by. Elijah thought the Lord would come in a dramatic way, and indeed strong winds, cascading rocks, earthquakes and a fire all occurred, but the Lord was not present in those dramatic events. Finally, a light, silent sound, a whisper, came from within, and Elijah heard the Lord. 
My brothers, as our Constitution states, you have heard that call from within, that whisper of God beckoning you to join this great band of men we call Holy Cross. I suggest to you, shortly you will no doubt hear that whisper again in the silence of your hearts as you prostrate yourselves and the litany of the saints is sung. It's a beautiful and solemn moment. And all of us in this basilica who love you will be responding to that litany, praying for the saints to be with you on your journey. It's a dramatic moment in this liturgy. But let me suggest that as you lie prostrate before us all, Allow the whisper to speak within you yet again. For it is God calling you, as God called Elijah. And then do as Elijah did. Get up. Get up, for you have a great journey ahead of you. A journey of joy, of love, of hope. A journey as a finely professed religious of Holy Cross. Those who are to make profession of perpetual vows, please stand. Mr. Christopher William Brennan of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Present. Mr. Brendan Joseph McAleer of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Present. Mr. Timothy Robert Weed of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Present. My brothers, what do you ask of God's Church and of the Congregation of Holy Cross? My sisters and brothers gather here in prayer. God has called these men to follow Christ as religious of Holy Cross. In our joy, let us express our thanks for this sign of God's love. very humble they turned back too quickly. <laughs> Christopher, Brendan, and Timothy, my brothers, in baptism you have already died to sin and you have been consecrated to God's service. Are you now resolved to commit yourselves forever to single-hearted intimacy with God, to trust in dependence upon God, and to willing surrender to God? Are you resolved in consecrated celibacy to love with the freedom, openness, and availability that can be recognized as a sign of the kingdom? I am resolved. Are you resolved in consecrated poverty to seek to share the lot of the poor and to unite in their cause, trusting in the Lord as provider? I am resolved. Are you resolved in consecrated obedience 
to join with our brothers in community and with the whole church in search of God's will. I am resolved. Are you resolved to give over your whole life in generous service to all people, to serve them out of your own faith, that the Lord has loved us and died for us and risen for us, and that he offers us a share in his life, a life more powerful and enduring than any sin or death. I am resolved. May Almighty God grant you the grace to fulfill what you resolve through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, let us pray through the intercession of Mary and all the saints that God the Almighty may bless and strengthen these servants who have been called to follow Christ in the religious life. Please kneel.
Almighty and eternal God, listen to the prayers of your people. May the fire of your Holy Spirit purify your servants from all sin and make them burn with the fervor of divine love. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My brothers, Christopher, Brendan, Timothy, I can attest to your willingness to follow in the footsteps of our holy founder, Blessed Basil Moreau, and to embrace forever our religious life. I now invite you to come forward and in the presence of this community and Almighty God to publicly profess your vows. Christopher William Brennan. Of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Kneel in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and my Lord. In the assembly of his church amid the Congregation of Holy Cross. And before you, Reverend Thomas J. O'Hara, CSC, Provincial Superior of the United States Province of Priests and Brothers of the Congregation of Holy Cross, to profess my dedication and my vows. I believe that I have been called by the Father and led by the Spirit to offer my life and my life's work in the service of the Lord for the needs of the church and the world. Therefore, I make forever the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience according to the constitutions of the Congregation of Holy Cross. May the God who allows me and invites me to make this commitment strengthen and protect me to be faithful to it. Christopher, in the name of the Church and of the Congregation of Holy Cross, I accept your vows. May God, who began this good work in you, bring it to completion. I, Brendan Joseph McAleer of the Congregation of Holy Cross, kneel in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and my Lord, in the assembly of his church amid the Congregation of Holy Cross, and before you, Reverend Thomas J. O'Hara, 
CSC, Provincial Superior of the United States Province, of priests and brothers of the Congregation of Holy Cross, to profess my dedication and my vows. I believe that I have been called by the Father and led by the Spirit to offer my life and my life's work in the service of the Lord for the needs of the Church and the world. Therefore, I make to God forever the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience according to the constitutions of the Congregation of Holy Cross. May the God who allows me and invites me to make this commitment strengthen and protect me to be faithful to it. Brendan, in the name of the Church and of the Congregation of Holy Cross, I accept your vows. May God who began this good work in you bring it to completion. I, Timothy Robert Weed of the Congregation of Holy Cross, kneel in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and my Lord, in the assembly of his church amid the Congregation of Holy Cross, and before you, Reverend Thomas J. O'Hara of the Congregation of Holy Cross, Provincial Superior of the United States Province of Priests and brothers of the Congregation of Holy Cross to profess my dedication and my vows. I believe that I have been called by the Father and led by the Spirit to offer my life and my life's work in the service of the Lord for the needs of the Church and the world. Therefore, I make to God forever the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience, according to the constitutions of the Congregation of Holy Cross. May the God who allows me and invites me to make this commitment strengthen and protect me to be faithful to it. Timothy, in the name of the Church and of the Congregation of Holy Cross, I accept your vows. May God who began this good work in you Bring it to completion. Amen. Please stand. Lord God, source of holiness and growth in the church, all creation owes you its debt of praise. In the beginning of time, you created the world to share your joy. When it lay broken by Adam's sin, you promised a new heaven and a new earth. You entrusted the earth to the care of men and women to be made fruitful by their work. Living in this world, they were to direct their steps to the heavenly city. By your sacraments, you made us your children and welcome us into your church. You distribute among us the many gifts of your spirit. Some serve you in chaste marriage, others forgo marriage for the sake of the kingdom, sharing all things in common. With one heart and mind in the bond of love, they become a sign of the communion of heaven. Father, we pray now, send your spirit upon these servants of yours who have committed themselves with steadfast faith to the words of Christ your Son. Strengthen their understanding and direct their lives by the teaching of the gospel. May the law of love rule in their hearts and concern for others distinguish their lives so that they may be a witness to you, the one true God, and to your infinite love for all people. By their courage in daily trials, may they receive, even in this life, your promised hundredfold, and at the end, 
and everlasting reward in heaven. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christopher, receive the image of the crucified. He saved the world by his cross and invites you to share in his mission of service to his people. Follow in his footsteps and you will come to share in the glory of his resurrection. Brendan, receive the image of the crucified. He saved the world by his cross and invites you to share in the mission of service to his people. Follow in his footsteps and you will come to share in the glory of his resurrection. Timothy, receive the image of the crucified. He saved the world by his cross and invites you to share in his mission of service to his people. Follow in his footsteps and you will come to share in the glory of his resurrection. Christopher, Brendan, Timothy, we confirm that you are now one with us forever as members of the Congregation of Holy Cross, sharing all things in common with us now and in the future. I'm glad they were not so bashful this time. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, let our gifts be consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit, so that the sacrifice of the altar, offered in union with the Virgin, may wipe away our sins and open for us the gates of heaven. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in your loving providence, you decreed that Mary, the mother of your son, should stand faithfully beside his cross and so fulfill, so fulfill in her person the prophecies of old and enrich the world with her own witness of living faith. At the cross, the Virgin appears as the new Eve, so that as a woman shared in bringing death, so a woman would share in restoring life. At the cross, with motherly love, she embraces her children reunited through the death of Christ, and she fulfills the mystery of the mother of Zion. At the cross, she stands as the model of the church, the bride of Christ, which draws inspiration from her courage and keeps constant faith with its bridegroom, undaunted by peril and unbroken by persecution. So in our joy, we sing to your glory with all the choirs of angels as we sing. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Andre and blessed Basil, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Francis our Pope, Kevin our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Strengthen in their holy resolve, O Lord, these your servants, who today have given themselves to you perpetually in the sacred bonds of religious profession, and grant that they may show forth in your church the new and eternal life purchased for us by Christ's redemption. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Lord God, protect your servants whose hunger and thirst you have satisfied in this sacrament. As we call to mind Mary's sufferings with Christ, grant that by carrying our cross each day, we may come to share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. On behalf of our Moro Seminary community, thank you to all of you for joining us for this beautiful liturgy today for the celebration of the final vows of our brothers. Thank you to Father Tom O'Hara, our provincial superior, for presiding at our liturgy and preaching. Thank you to Dr. Andrew McShane and to the liturgical choir for our very beautiful music today. Immediately after our liturgy, we will have a reception in the main building, so all are invited to pass through the doors to the right here and head up the main stairs to the main building uh, for our reception. And if you need an elevator, please go around to the back of the main building, and you'll find the entrance there and the elevators. Thank you. My brothers, Christopher, Brendan, Timothy, come before the altar of God to receive his blessing. I would like everyone to invite everyone rather to extend a hand in a gesture of blessing and pray with me. God inspires all holy desires and brings them to fulfillment. May God's grace always keep you, our brothers, faithful to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the evangelical life in the Holy Cross. May God keep you single-hearted in your consecrated celibacy, generous in your poverty, and wholehearted in your obedience. Amen. May God always keep you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and enduring in love. Amen. And may all of you who have partaken in this celebration receive the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended.